the Great Lakes, they are one of the world's great natural resources, almost 20% of the world's surface fresh water. And they have multiple uses from recreation, commercial, and it's, it's critically important to how we use the Great Lakes to be able to manage them in a constructive fashion. And when you have the invasive species coming in, they dramatically alter the food web. Well, aquatic invasive species encompasses a whole host of individual organisms, including fish, zooplankton, uh, phytoplankton, uh, even plant species. Basically, it's an organism that isn't um, historically native, so it isn't in that location, hasn't been in that location, and it was brought over either accidentally or intentionally to a new aquatic ecosystem. There's no upside to them, but they introduce a lot of uncertainty into the system. Well, because the invasive species have uh, dramatically altered the whole food web, structurally changed the food web and how, it, how the energy carbon is cycled in the food web, which has implications for fisheries management, um, water quality management, and we've had um, many, many nuisance problems. Basically what I do is I assess how those organisms impact the behaviors of native fish, and not just the behaviors, but maybe diet, um, where they live, so their habitat. The goby that I work with, it impacts smallmouth bass in the way that they forage as young individuals. And so if gobies are an intense competitor um, during the egg and, and juvenile stage of smallmouth bass, that'll impact the number of catchable fish that are in the lake. The impacts that these individuals have on the ecosystem force us as managers to kind of change our resource management strategies and tactics to try to minimize the impacts of these guys on other aquatic uh, species. If we control non-indigenous species into the Great Lakes, we will have better management practice because the systems will be more stable. And that's the problem right now, they just change so dramatically and so fundamentally with sometimes the introduction of certain invasive species that it makes it very, very difficult to manage them. And, and that's why I think we'll have, you know, we'll have better fisheries, we'll have better water quality. Well, individuals can do a lot to minimize the introduction in particular of aquatic invasives. Once that fish outgrows, outgrows your aquarium, don't, don't set it free in the lake because it's a potential aquatic invasive species if it finds another individual or a few individuals to, to reproduce with, you could establish a reproducing population in the lake. Making sure you clean out your live wells. Um, for zebra mussels and quagga mussels, it's good to wash down the side of your boat if you're going to put it in one water body and move it to another water body. We really want to geographically isolate the lakes. We want to, you know, anything that goes on in the lakes, we don't want to transport out of the lakes. Anything from another place in Ohio, small inland lake, whatever, we don't want to transport um, into the great into Lake Erie. The most important thing that people need to recognize, and I think often we, we lose this perspective living in the Great Lakes, we take them for granted. But they are truly one of the world's great natural resources.